How's it going ladies and gentlemen? In this video, we're taking a look at some of the standout iPad OS exclusive features. But first, a word from our sponsor. 9to5Mac on YouTube is sponsored by Zugu Case, maker of Amazon's highest rated iPad case. The new Alpha case for 11 inch second generation iPad Pro features remarkable durability while still being thin. Because it comes with a robust bumper, it can protect your iPad from five foot drops even on the concrete. And don't forget the innovative adjustable magnetic stand with eight, yes, eight built in viewing angles. It features a soft microfiber interior to protect your iPad, wireless Apple Pencil charging capability, and a built in Apple Pencil pocket. The Alpha comes with a free one-year warranty, sleep-wake functionality. It's perfect for travelers, business people, students, and anyone looking for a durable, dynamic, and sleek iPad case with luxury car vibes. Click the link in the description to get your Zugu Alpha case today. So before we start, I wanted to remind you that I went super in-depth with the iOS 14 beta. If you haven't seen it already, be sure to click the link to check that out because I went really in depth. So in this video, I'm not going to regurgitate all that information. Instead, I'm going to focus on iPad exclusive features for the most part. So let's get started with app design. And when it comes to the general design of key applications, you're definitely going to notice a difference when compared to iPad OS 13. For example, you'll notice these redesigned sidebars and notice you can hide or show that sidebar in the photos app, but notice how much information that provides you with at your fingertips. So not only do you get just the basic little sections like library and for you, things of that nature, but you also get all your media types. As you can see there, you get all your shared albums, you get additional albums, it is really dense with information. Whereas in iPad OS 13, you had to use the bottom toolbar to navigate to the various sections to get to places like media types, for instance. But now it's all accessible right from that sidebar. So here's iPad OS 13. So here you can see you just have four of those tabs at the bottom, photos, for you, albums, and search. Notice the difference with that sidebar. So much more information at your fingertips. And in iPad OS 14, this enhancement comes to more applications. For instance, the music app gets a redesigned sidebar as well with all your playlists, your library, your music, your main tabs, of course, but then you have all that other stuff at your fingertips, shortcuts, as you can see there, follow a similar pattern in design overall. Another change you'll find in iPad OS 14 are the toolbars. You get these handy toolbars and these have been streamlined in iPad OS 14 to consolidate all the buttons and menus into a single interface just to make it easier to access controls for the app. And you'll also find that consolidated toolbar in the files app as well. Notice you don't have to swipe down to reveal those buttons. They are automatically exposed from the get go. So that's really nice to have. Now in iPad OS 13, the popover windows, like the ones for a new message, for instance, would not automatically dismiss when tapping outside of that window, as you can see there. But now here in iPad OS 14, notice what happens when you tap outside of the popover, it will automatically dismiss and just minimize like that. So the point is these aren't benchmark standout features, but these are quality of life enhancements that make using your iPad more intuitive. And you also find a handy new date picker in the calendar app. You also find a similar picker in the reminders app. I showed you that in our iOS 14 video, but that's nice to have as well. And of course, you'll also find the updated time picker to go along with that. Now I went in depth with search on the iOS 14 video walkthrough, but here on the iPad, notice you get a very Mac-like spotlight experience, which makes sense because you have all that screen real estate. So that allows you to launch apps. It allows you to search the web. You can even search within your favorite applications. And the cool thing is that you maintain context. So it doesn't whisk you away to some special spotlight interface, but no, it just appears on top of the screen, even when you're in an application like Safari, for instance, you can invoke Spotlight, it just appears right on top of your content, which makes it feel just way more Mac-like. You know, when you invoke Spotlight on the Mac, it doesn't take you to some special Spotlight screen. No, it just appears right on top of your content. And while Spotlight is nice to use on the iPhone, when paired with the keyboard on the iPad, it just feels so much more powerful. Seems like you can get things done so much quicker. You can search, like I said, you can search the web, you can launch your favorite websites, you can search in your favorite applications, you can launch your favorite applications. It's a very power user friendly tool for iPad power users. Now the compact UI also comes to the iPad 
And you know, it makes a lot of sense to have this UI that doesn't automatically take away focus from your current task. So when you receive an incoming VoIP call or a phone call or a FaceTime call, the interface simply appears in a little window at the top of your screen, not pulling focus away from your current task. Of course, you can, you can maximize that if you wanna do so and minimize it, go back to it just like that. Super handy new functionality here in iPadOS 14. And it doesn't stop there. You also get Siri as well, compact Siri. So we'll go ahead and do that. Notice it doesn't take up the full screen. So you maintain context as far as where you are within the interface. You don't forget where you are. You can ask Siri questions. Now, unfortunately, although the, the Siri interface doesn't pull away focus from your current activity, you still cannot use your iPad while the Siri interface is on screen. Like if you tap it, Siri just goes away, right? So you can still like, if you're reading a web page, still read your web page while Siri is on screen, but you wouldn't be able to navigate and swipe on that page and expect Siri to maintain its presence on the screen. Let me show you what I mean here. So I invoke Siri, ask it a question, and I tap, and you see it goes away just like that. Let's do it again. And there we go. So there's the answer to my question. And if I tap the screen, Siri dismisses. Now let's talk about one of the coolest iPadOS 14 features, and that is Scribble. Scribble uses the Apple Pencil to allow you to interface with your iPad in brand new ways. Let me show you what I mean here right now. So with Scribble, you can actually hand write in any text field in iPadOS 14. And to me, this really ups the usefulness of the Apple Pencil because people like to use this thing to navigate around iPadOS. Well, now you can take it to the next level and even insert text using handwriting in various text fields around iPadOS 14. So let me show you what I mean. Here in the address bar of Safari, I'm simply going to write a search term. So I'm gonna just write in here, in my chicken scratch, Tesla Model Y. Notice how it automatically converts that over to text. I spelled it wrong that last time. Let me do it again. And it was able to read my chicken scratch. That's amazing. So it converts my handwriting as bad as it is into text and I can easily submit that search term in Safari just like that. Super simple, super easy. But that my friends is just part of the story. Let me show you some other cool scribble features. So say you wanna delete a word. Well, simply scratch on it like this with your Apple Pencil and it's gone. Say you wanted to highlight a word. Well, you simply circle it with your Apple Pencil like that and it selects that word. So if you don't already have an Apple Pencil, you might wanna go ahead and get one in preparation for iPad OS 14, but that's not all. Let me show you what else it can do here. If I touch and hold with my Apple Pencil, it puts in a space and I can actually write a word in between that space. And you'll notice that it closes the gap by itself. Now you also may have noticed this Scribble shortcut palette and this thing is actually contextual. So it's gonna change its available functionality based on the app you're in and what you're doing in that app. So here you see it just has search. So I can tap on that, invoke the search in Safari. Simple and easy. But watch what happens when I head over to the mail app and I tap in the body of the email. Notice how that palette changes to reflect email related functionality so I can quickly access all my format tools, et cetera. And the same thing goes for the reminder application. And that presents me with a Scribble shortcut palette related to the reminders app. So I can insert a date, my location, whatever the case may be, just like that. But it doesn't stop with Scribble. In iPadOS 14, you have way better note-taking capabilities with the Apple Pencil. Now you can highlight words, sentences, paragraphs, just like you would normally do with written text. And it does a pretty good job of recognizing your written words. And that speaks to how well this works because it's even recognizing alien writing by yours truly. That is impressive. Not just that, just like you would with typed text, you can now drag and select handwriting just like that. And you could be very precise with it. You can just drag a little bit, go back a little bit, select a letter by letter, word by word. It's impressive stuff. What do you guys think about that? Let me know down below in the comment section. Thumbs up if you appreciate this new functionality. But here's the thing. Now, when I select handwritten text, I can actually copy as text, like type text. So just tap copy as text, and then I can paste, and that's gonna paste type text based on my handwriting. So if, you, if you're taking notes, that can be super handy if you like to keep both versions. 
that allows you to do that. And it's easy to make space between written text. So you just drag down on the little triangle to make space. And you can also just tap and select insert space above. And then you can drag the little triangle back up so you can get just the right spacing for your written text. And there's even data detection support. So for instance, it recognizes there's an email address there. You can see the underline, just tap on it. I can compose a new email. And the same thing goes for the phone number. Just tap it and I can dial that number. And I showed you the shape recognition feature in iOS 14, but I also wanted to show you here because it's just so handy to have with the Apple Pencil. It will automatically, if you just draw your shape, hold at the end of the drawing, it will automatically go ahead and complete that shape for you. Now in iOS 14, you know you have the new emoji search functionality, but here in iPadOS 14, you have a new emoji popover menu. So just tap emoji and there's your emoji popover menu and you can just swipe through all your favorite emoji and select the one that you're looking for. So I'll choose that one. And in the music app, you get full screen lyrics now and a cue to manage playback, but let me show you the full screen lyrics. Just tap the lyrics button. It gives you your time sync lyrics. And look at that, it's no longer just relegated to a small little sidebar, but now it's a very karaoke friendly, prominent display. And one other thing I wanted to point out for iPad OS 14, you now have quick toggles for the camera app. So you, you'll see a new option here under the camera settings. If you go into formats, you'll see where it says video format control. So I have that enabled, that's disabled by default, but I've turned that on. So now I can choose both my resolution and my frame rate, just like I can on the iPhone, simply by tapping. So I said that was the final one, but actually no. Widgets, of course I could not allow this video to complete without at least talking about widgets. Widgets aren't ex as exciting as they are on iOS 14. Let's just be honest. They are relegated to the side area of your iPad's first screen. So while you can go in and do everything you can do on iOS 14 as far as editing widgets, choosing its various functionality on a widget by widget basis, you can go in, remove widgets, add widgets, it's just not as cool because you can't actually put them on the main home screen area like you can on the iPhone. So to me, that doesn't make any sense because it's like you have all this real estate. Why can't you take advantage of it? But that's neither here nor there. Let's just talk about some of the functionality. So you still have the ability to keep your widgets firmly placed on the first page of your home screen. So that will keep it always available on the first page of your home screen. You also have your little favorite section up there and that's uh, that's designated by the little square, the little gray square, and that can house four small widgets, two medium widgets, or one large widget. So keep that in mind. So we're going to just drag over another widget here into our favorite section. We'll just take another small one. So you can see three small ones. Let's add another small one. Take this one here. And then we have four small widgets in our favorite section. So that's always going to be displayed. Even when I dismiss the other widgets below, those four widgets will always be displayed on that first page. So let's go back into edit mode and we'll modify our favorite section. So you, of course you can remove a widget just by tapping the minus sign, remove, and you can drag a widget out of your favorite section. So now only those two will be permanently displayed on that first page, as you can see there. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and add a medium and you can see how the two smaller widgets automatically adjust. Let's go ahead and add another medium and you'll see those two small widgets jump out of the favorite spot and go down to the, the general area of your widgets. All right, so just like on the iPhone, on iOS 14, you have all your various categories. You can go in those categories. So in this case, we're gonna add a large battery widget and you'll see those other two medium widgets go down to the general area. But like I was saying, it's just a little bit disappointing for the iPad to have all this real estate and yet still have the widgets relegated to just this area on the side of the first page. Just doesn't make sense to me, but maybe in the future, Apple will change its mind and decide to give us widgets on any area of the home screen on the iPad, given how much space is available there. 
So I'm interested to know what you guys think about iPadOS 14. Do you like it? Do you think there's enough big changes? Obviously there's tons more changes, but a lot of those are, are overlapping with what you find on iOS 14. So definitely, if you haven't already, check out our full iOS 14 video where we go super in depth over, over well over an hour of coverage of iOS 14 changes and features. That is the companion video to this one right here. We'll be back with even more coverage of all the new beta releases here on 9to5Mac. If you appreciate this video, again, leave me a thumbs up that legitimizes this video for other viewers, potential viewers, and also subscribe for more videos like this. And extra special thanks to Zugu Case for sponsoring 9to5Mac. Zugu makes the Alpha Case specifically designed for the 2020 11 inch iPad Pro. It has, get this, eight built-in magnetic viewing angles. I just love that. Of course, the Alpha Case features Apple Pencil storage and supports Apple Pencil wireless charging. Click the link in the description to get your Zugu Alpha Case today. Special thanks to Zugu for sponsoring 9to5Mac on YouTube.